video video about light. One of my favorite subjects when it comes to growing orchids, especially on a beautiful, beautiful day without a single cloud in the sky. I would like to preempt something straight away. I know that light intensity is different for every growing environment. And here in Southern Spain, when I talk about all the different categories of light, my light intensity is probably much, much higher than if I was speaking about the same conditions up in the north of Europe. Or if, for example, I was down in Florida, that intensity would change as well the further north you go in the United States or anywhere else in the world. Once I've discussed everything I want to talk about today, at the end of the video, I have a color swatch like a Pantone color swatch, where I have left radiant colors of what the leaves should look like for several different most commonly grown orchids for them to then be the right color for the orchid to bloom out. Because when we speak of light, we also speak of will the orchid bloom in XYZ amount of light and how we can determine that while the orchid is growing is to check the color of the leaves. So without trying to interpret your light conditions or the intensity of it, I will just discuss the subject of light based on my conditions and you tweak that according to where you're growing. And I also want to preempt that I do speak for us growers that have the opportunity to take our orchids outside during the warmer months of the year, growing them outside. But maybe this video will also give you some nuggets of information if you are growing under artificial lights. At least, I hope so. So we are on a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. And I'm gonna start with the category of full sun. And obviously this berry odor is exposed to full sun, not just during filming, but that is part of her culture here in my hemisphere. And of course, full sun happens when there's not a single cloud in the sky and your orchid is completely and totally exposed. For the orchid to be able to tolerate full sun for an extended period of time, airflow is very, very important because that cools down the leaves and stops them from burning. Then we get the category when we hear the language of a dappled light. And dappled light can happen when our orchids are protected by foliage, the trees or trellises. It's also called part shade. I love dappled light because that means there is already airflow in the air because the leaves of the trees are moving, exposing my orchids to sometimes light, sometimes not light, which is wonderful because it gives the leaves a little bit of a respite from anything that could be too harsh. And then we have the terminology of bright shade. This is very important for orchids that need a lot of light in order for them to bloom, but they would easily burn if they were exposed to direct sun. So bright shade is a fantastic condition to be able to provide for orchids because you are guaranteed plenty of light without burning the leaves. And this can be achieved by keeping orchids under a covered space where even the angle of the sun won't hit them. And if that is not always possible, then only exposure to morning and late afternoon sun should be allowed. But my absolute favorite form of bright shade is using the reflecting light off a wall to act as the light source while the orchids are in full shade, never exposed to sun, I don't have to worry about morning sun being too hot, late afternoon sun being too hot. My orchids are in permanent shade, but the reflecting facade takes care of the light source. The easiest way to get bright shade. Increase the intensity of that reflecting light by using a white curtain is also super easy and very, very effective. Then we of course have overcast light. That is obviously when the cloud cover is solid and during bouts of rain. But be aware that occasional overcast condition, sort of scattered showers will mean the sun can come out on occasions, which could prove dangerous if orchids are out to get a good rain flush. And those that should not be exposed to direct sun are in a vulnerable position at that point point and will burn because raindrops can act as a magnifying glass, heat up that bubble of water and burn the leaves. 
Not only is light the most important factor that we give our orchids so that they bloom for us, produce chlorophyll and grow well, I find light is also super important in my growing conditions where I have to bring my orchids inside during the winter because I use the light to train my orchid to stay within the parameters of the pot. This keeps the growth contained within the pot making large orchids easier to handle and saves space on the shelves when the orchids come inside. And then using light as a training source for a spike when it is growing. How I do that is I always face new growths away from the brightest light and the growth will grow upright into the pot instead of at a 45 degree angle, which will then hang out over the edge of the pot once the growth has matured. Exactly the same I do with the spikes. If the new growth grows upright and into the rest of the orchid, the growth and the structure of the orchid, and then the spike forms, the display will cascade over the other growths the blooms will present themselves evenly and there is less risk of breaking spikes. I did a video specifically for light training where there's a bit more of a deep dive, giving you plenty of examples with what I do. And especially with the example of what if I have more than one growing lead? If you have three growth points coming, uh, how do you position the orchid? That is in that video as a deep dive. So I will link that in the description if you are interested to see what I do using the light I have available, using the angle of the sun, hopefully more often than not to my advantage. Not only is light training important for the aesthetics, but keeping the orchid in the same position, returning it to the shelf after watering or any form of maintenance would appear to be a minor detail, but it will stress the orchid out if the position and the rotation is constantly changed. You see, leaves will want to turn their position to face the sun again, and this takes time and energy, which is an unnecessary waste of the orchid's resources and it will always do that because the orchid's aim is to photosynthesize, which it cannot do properly if we don't pay attention to the position of the orchid and the light source and the leaves facing the direction of the light source. And know that we haven't got it all under control because what we see as the highest light source may in actual fact not be the case. The white rim of a pot reflecting light may be what the orchid deems to be the light source, which could make an immature spike move away from the direction of what we consider the high light source and towards the rim of a pot. In cases like these, the focus should always be on the leaves having the consistent angle of the sun. Their spike will either correct itself if it grows longer or it may not, but the positioning of the leaves should be our focus all the time. If you're not at the equator or thereabouts, watch out for the changing light conditions through spring and fall. As the angle of the sun changes in the sky, places with full sun will slowly turn into shade and vice versa. Staying on top of the orchid shuffle in this case during these seasons is really important. You see, when I had orchids displayed in my blooming alley throughout the summer and they bloomed later than usual, where there once was shade, the angle of the sun penetrated through that space and burned my leaves. I had the orchid in bloom much, much earlier the previous year where that space was full shade. So I was not vigilant about the angle of the sun and the sun directly on the leaves. And another thing, in the case of some orchids that bloom for a long time, summer blooming Phalaenopsis, for example, the leaves start to turn toward the light source in the opposite direction of where the blooms were facing me. It's really not that big a deal, but again, stress and energy is wasted and the sunburned leaves or two is such a shame. So what I took from that last year in my blooming alley is that my summer blooming fowls, when they are in bloom, either need to face away from me and I don't get to appreciate the blooms or positioned in such a way that I do see the blooms, but they have the light source as per the direction of the leaves. And if any of my orchids bloom late again in this year, I will be much more aware of the angle of the sun so as not to burn more leaves. One little fun fact regarding light, the higher the light without burning the leaves, the more vibrant the colors of the blooms will be, unless of course it is a white bloom. <laughs>
It seems such a banal subject, but it is very, very important that we understand the different forms of light and how they can affect our orchids. I hope that my little color swatch where you can see the colors of the leaves that your orchids should have will help you also be able to judge if your orchid is getting enough light. Once again, I understand that I am in southern Spain and my light intensities are totally different from anywhere else further north of me. Either way, no matter where you're growing, when it comes to natural light, natural sun exposure for your orchids, your orchids are adapted to where you are. One thing though, airflow is important. Even if an orchid can tolerate full sun on extremely hot days, extreme conditions, if there is no airflow, the leaves will burn. So just take that in mind no matter where you are in the world and let me know if this video was of any help at all. Maybe if the light conditions aren't comparable, the swatch that I'm going to give you now as a screenshot format will help you match the colors to the orchids that you're growing so that you know your light levels are on point and hopefully that will result in blooms. Really appreciate your time watching. Thank you so very, very much. I wish you a very beautiful day. The condition still stands though, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.